and implications because we believe the Northern Cape can do with change. Thirdly, as crucial as our objectives are, is to ensure that we retain the Western Cape and increase the majority there. This, uh, as a province, has been well led, and ultimately we've shown the people of the Western Cape what good government looks like. We've demonstrated to the people of South Africa the fact that where the DA governs, unemployment decreases, and in fact, many of our governments are experiencing clean audits. So election 2019 and the infrastructure is in place. The Democratic Alliance has put together a team of people that obviously will be working on the national election, but also in each province, a respective team that will be executing. In the next number of months, we go straight into the appointment of premier candidates, and then the election proper will then go into place. We believe without doubt that, in fact, not only are these three provinces that we're focused on, we want to increase our percentages uh, in all the other respective provinces. And most specifically, I want to raise the province of KwaZulu-Natal. Many of you would have watched yesterday about the fact that even the ANC can't hold a Congress in KwaZulu-Natal. The people of KwaZulu-Natal have been calling me saying, Musi Maiman, as the official opposition here, you must come in so that we can set up a program where we can ensure that the ANC dips below in that particular province. What is also key about KwaZulu-Natal is that we've seen also a growth of the IFP in that particular province, and in the recent by-elections indicates the fact that the ANC there in that province faces great difficulty. We're very clear, equally so, as we anal analyzed what is happening in the Northwest, that this presents an opportunity where, in fact, when you look at where the ANC's government in the Northwest, it's on the verge of collapse in many other areas, and even still today cannot agree on who a premier candidate is. Those two provinces, uh, along with the Eastern Cape, indicate to us that we have a great opportunity to increase our share of the vote that will add to our national targets. Ladies and gentlemen, in speaking about the Eastern Cape, I was really encouraged by the recent results in the by-election in a community called Musa, where in fact the DA in certain VDs there in rural Eastern Cape in the Transkei was getting upwards towards 65 percent. We've grown there from 6 percent to 27 percent in rural Eastern Cape, which is an acceptance of the strategy that we adopted that we will go into communities all across the country. The DA remains still today the only party that is the alternative to the ANC and stands in opposition against the ANC. It's ANC policies that have brought our people here and our country here. We inherited a very difficult past, born out of apartheid. We had 24 years of ANC government, and our stance is that the people of South Africa should have been much further along. So we look at a number of issues. We also, in the Eastern Cape, recognize the fact that the DA grew even in um, Buffalo City, where we went from 88% to 96%, and as I've highlighted, the position about in Musa Hill local municipality. The DA in Limpopo is showing in this month of youth that we've been able to be successful in a number of TVET colleges. In fact, uh, we've shown that in the Eastern Cape we're winning in TVET colleges, accessing a new ground, and I'm most excited about the fact that welcoming and looking at our youth report that our young people have formed an SRC government in Fort Hare University. I wish to invite members here that as part of our focus in this next month, that in the month of June, South Africans will be looking towards Youth Month and we will be holding our Youth Day event at the University of Fort Hare on the 16th itself, and then on the 15th I will be here in Soweto with uh, the people of Soweto here celebrating the very st struggle and the fight that young people have fought. The crucial campaign in this month will also focus itself on the recruitment and the selection not only of members of parliament, but also of premier candidates. The Democratic Alliance is the only party that does not practice cater deployment. We don't ask people to say, if you, are, you must come into the organization so that you can end up in parliament. So our applications are open online. Everybody and anybody must apply to, to become a member of parliament. Uh, or a member of the provincial legislature. Even I have to submit my own sub forms, but, uh, but that will work itself out in the list process. <laughs> but the really exciting news is that we open up the door. This gives us an opportunity to make sure we get the best people for government. 
whether they are inside the DA or outside the DA, the best people will go serve our people in legislatures. And as we prepare for Gauteng, the Northern Cape and the Western Cape, we want the most competent MECs so that we can turn the fortunes of our people. That is why we are going out on a rigorous process to attract more, more and more people. We also will be present more in the ground in the next number of months, looking at how we roll out a message of one South Africa for all. The DA still remains today the only party that is attractive to all South Africans, black and white, colored and Indian, in communities all across the country, rich and poor, working and unemployed. And therefore, to manage the process requires all a, a structure upon which we will be present on the ground in more communities than ever before. Turning our attention to Youth Month, clearly, young people paid a massive price. But what we dare never should forget is that this month must address the fundamental struggle that young people face. Of all the people that are unemployed, just over 60 percent of those are young people. Our youth are not only unemployed, but many of them are unemployable. This poses a real crisis. It's a crisis that is, not, that is bigger than corruption. Many people think that South Africa's only problem is corruption. But it's the fact that our young people are not employable. It's in the light of that that a policy proposal has been put forward called the Ladder of Opportunity that Federal Executive interrogated, that focuses on how young people can be developed from early childhood development centers. We work our way through a program where young people, through basic education, we can set up uh, an education system through collaboration education that will ensure that young people get the best education in our country, that post school we want to adopt a national civilian year where we can give young people a program upon which they can spend a year doing internship programs in various sectors. It's within that that even the city of Johannesburg's budget that will be passed tomorrow will indicate an internship component for young people to come and work in this month of youth. It will be the same in the city of Chwane, the same in Nelson Mandela Bay, and ultimately Cape Town have been working this program for a number of years. We have the complete view that we call upon young people. This month is about their future. It's about us ensuring that we work for a better tomorrow. And therefore, as a country, we must debate strongly what future are we offering young people, what type of education we put forward for there. And we call upon young people to come through and register to, to vote in this month, but also to ensure that they take their tomorrow into their own hands. I've also, as part of government's outputs, as we assessed the nature and standard of all our governments, we've introduced a program called Vuguzake, which gives us an opportunity to go meet CEOs and engage them on private sector-led initiatives that can absorb young people. All our cities have been tasked with setting up Kupuka centers, and these are centers where micro-enterprise and people can come and... That's DA leader there, Musi Maimane, outlining their plans ahead of the 2019 elections. One of the things that they talk about is how they plan to retain the Western Cape, and the party also not wants to re retain the Western Cape only, but they also want to grow their support base in that particular province. And also talking about how they're eyeing the Northern Cape as well, because they believe that the people of the Northern Cape are waiting for change. And and they're also focusing on KZN and also then capitalizing on the moment that even the ruling party in KZN yesterday could not hold its conference, its elective conference. And of course, that had to be brought to a halt when court action was brought against that particular conference. And he says that people of KZN have been calling him as the official uh, opposition in the province and they want the DA to grow its support base also in the province. And just as we cut out there, he was talking about the plans that they are outlining for young people as it's youth month and he was also outlining the program of the party as the, the 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 month of june progresses and the fact that they are now going to be going into the ground as well and looking at bringing more support and of course right now this is where i leave you for this afternoon i'll take you straight to an ad break but uh, the way